Hey, everybody. It is Mike and Chris for episode two of our new series, still to be named series. We are open to suggestions on this, but uh, largely Hall of Fame and collection buying talk, baseball Hall of Fame and collection buying talk today. Chris, how are things? Great. Great. How are things with you? Good. Hot, man. It is hot in the Northeast and uh, looking forward to some cooler weather starting, I think, tomorrow. Yeah, it's it's unbearable here. <laughs> it's yeah. like nine ninety five every day. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, we've gotten into the nineties pretty consistently the last week or so, and I think the heat breaks tomorrow. Okay, which I'm looking forward to. Um, yeah, what's going on in your world? Uh, Nana, I want to hear about your uh, your first ever dealer. You know, I'm a now a dealer pickup uh, it, it, that we discussed last time. Yeah, you, uh, so yeah. I have I have gone through it officially and fully since then. Okay. And I so for anybody who hasn't seen it, I paid three hundred and fifty dollars for a small collection of singles, uh, no big dollar items whatsoever. But uh, when I went through it on video, and all the commenters agreed. Not all the commenters. A lot of commenters felt like, and I agreed at the time, there's no way I'm going to make money on this collection. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, at the time, thought, oh, man, this is, they're right. But I have now gone through it fully and thoroughly, and there's no way I'm not going to make money on it. Oh, nice. I think I, I can make a pretty substantial amount. The challenge is going to be the amount of time I'm going to put into it. Okay. So I think at the end of it, when I do an analysis, which I'll do a video, and I put in, here's how much I made, here's how many hours I put into it, that dollars per hour rate that I made is, is going to be lower than I want it to be. Like, like very low. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I think I've probably spent six hours on it so far. Okay. And I've barely listed any cards. Okay. What, what's your main, main outlet to sell? Com, COMC and eBay? eBay. And then I'm sending... I don't know, a hundred off to Com C as yeah. well. But I'm what I'm doing is uh, putting a lot of lots, player lots and team lots on eBay. Okay. With low shipping, some low shipping, some you know the standard bubble mailer. Yeah. But um, Beans Ballcar Blog, who's a subscriber of mine, is active on Twitter, gave me a tip on how to ship lots cheaply. So I'm, I'm trying that. I have some on eBay right now. Okay. So uh, we'll see. It's going to be interesting. But I think, you know, what, what do you hope? What's your number for dollar, your dollars per hour earned? Oh, yeah. I, I have no idea. I, I, don't, I, don't I don't calculate that anymore. But I know early on I was under minimum wage in most of my buys. Um, and that's just because you don't you don't fact you don't learn to factor in the time until you've done it a number of times, and then you're like, wait a minute, I really gotta factor in my time here. Um, yeah, I, my partner Jeremy, who I did a bunch of bunch of early a bunch of I've been doing deals with him for ten plus years. Early on, we would buy a collection, and there would be like, you know, fifty thousand junk wax era cards, and you know, if you open up a box and it's all ninety one Donruss, there's just no point in going through it right um but he would want me to go through every card pull out every ryan sandberg and pull out oh. every and and i would do that early on and then i quickly learned you know if you do that you're if you do that to resell you're you're making yeah you're making you know dollars an hour type of thing for your time yeah i'm definitely not doing that um it is a lot of 2023 tops refractors okay yeah uh it's a lot of like mega box uh, mojo refractors whatever those things are called mega box refractors it's a lot of low-end numbered cards so it i think the way i'm going to bundle them mm -hmm. will help me sell them so i have let's say 20 tristan casas uh 2023 tops and tops chrome cards and refractors yeah. if i bundle those for i don't know five bucks at a dollar 11 shipping that should sell i'm just making up those numbers but yeah yeah no that, that, that that'll sell yeah so and i don't know if i just if i do auctions at 99 cents per auction and and risk it auctions are rough <laughs> i know i know i've got five auctions up right now okay and are these the first auctions that will end from this deal yeah yeah 
Yeah. Okay. So uh, one of them, there were six 1963 Tops cards in the okay. collection I bought, which is very strange. Just commons? No, there were five Hall of Famers. Oh, nice. And okay. one star, Rocky Calavito, uh -huh. was the non-Hall of Famer. Oh, so they're all stars. Right? Yeah. Like Calavito 63, that's a star. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And so I put those up in a, in a single lot on eBay. It's got yeah. three and a half days left. I started it at 99 cents. It's at like $7 right now. So. Yeah. That should do, were they low grade? They were mid grade. Okay. And then I was going through the collection again today and I found a Robin Roberts in very good shape. I mean, I would say I haven't looked at it closely, but it's at least a seven. I might send it off to SGC. Yeah. Just to see what that comes back as. No, but you said so the five Hall of Famers, who who are any of the bigger names or like Robin Robert level guys? Uh, Louis Aparicio and Aparicio was one of them. Yeah, he's he's then, always in there. <laughs> yeah, he is. I think a lot of people don't realize he's all famous, so they, they yeah, they don't. Pull yeah, him. well, Joe Torre too, who's Joe Torre. a manager. The second year though, Joe Torre. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's no major. There's no Sandy Koufax. Or no Mays like and that. Aaron. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. But it's a nice little 63 player lot. Yeah. Which yeah. You know, I think people like that stuff yeah nice so um let's talk hall of fame wait before that i have, I have one yeah. quick little short story to show so i recently purchased bought a collection and this was just really funny what was in it um so and i have it with me so you know you know what this card is <laughs> no I, I don't know well, tell, it's like my favorite player of all time jack morris okay so it's a 1978 tops jack morris rookie now that's not the funny part there um, this collection had like 50 of them. Why? I know. <laughs> so you're just going to do a lot? Huh? Are you going to sell those as a lot? I don't know, but I've never seen so many 78 Jack Morris rookies in one place. <laughs> but it was just funny that they were all Jack, Jack Morris, your favorite guy. <laughs> but yeah, that'll probably, that the... that'll probably be like an eBay lot, and then a couple will go to Comic City or something. But was that the collection you picked up on Thursday when we talked? Uh, no, no, this was like a week ago. Yeah. So, did you buy the collection on Thursday? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, it was it was a smaller collection. Okay. Yeah. Did I tell you last time I'm trying to buy a collection from a guy in New Hampshire who, uh, he wants five hundred and fifty dollars for it, and there's all the cards combined are worth five hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, he's convinced that he can sell all of them together for that amount, and he can't. No, no, it's eighteen cards in okay. the lot, I think, and I'm trying to convince him. Nobody wants all eighteen of these cards. Only a dealer will want to buy these from you, right? As a lot, as sure. a lot, and yeah. then so if you want to sell them individually. I think you could probably get close to five hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Right. If you want to get full price, you got to sell them yourself individually. Yeah. 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 But he he says, "Well, I can be patient. I'm not in a rush." Okay. Uh, good for yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, but I really want it. <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't mention. You did. Told me the other one about the 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 dual listing. Like a kid had listed it for twelve hundred, yeah. and then the okay, that one you you're, that one's done. Yeah, it's still listed from both of them. Okay. I still yeah. see it every time I go into Facebook Marketplace, yeah. but no, I'm not looking okay. at it. Gotcha. So right. well, that's a good good start, I say. Well, to your dealing career. Yeah. Anything else dealer related? That, that was it. That was. I just want to show you my my Jack Morris collection. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had a comment. I'm going to share my screen here. We got we got some great comments. Yeah. So we did get some great comments. Uh, thank you to everybody who commented on that last video. Very very positive. This one, and I, I took a screenshot of it, and I'm sorry to the person who left this video, but I cut off their name. So hopefully they'll comment and let us know who this was. I don't want to go back in. I don't even remember which video this was on. Yeah. But this person commented, uh, we're going to skip down to here. So uh, Harold Baines is the number one hitter who never should have been admitted, in their opinion. And Jack Morris is probably the Baines of pitching. <laughs> So close to those magic number, 3,000 hits or 3,000 Ks, 300 wins, 500 home runs. If Jack Morris had all the exact same stats, high ERA, uh, but he somehow managed two extra wins a year and 25 more strikeouts per year so that he got to 300 wins and 3,000 strikeouts, would that change the way we think about him as a potential Hall of Fame candidate? So Fred McGriff, I think, ended with 494 home runs, if I remember correctly. I think it's 493, but yeah. 493, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, 
would we have thought of Jack Morris more as a Hall of Famer if he had hit those magic numbers? I'll, I'll let you go first. What do you think? Well, so I have a lot to say. I, I love this question. Have you, so first question, have you ever seen Bull Durham, the movie? Uh, yeah. In fact, I just watched uh, like a five minute clip of it the other day because it had been so long since I watched the movie. Yeah. And a clip shop showed up in YouTube and I, I had to watch it. But it's been 25 years since I watched it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's from, I think it's the late 80s. So it's, it's, it's out, you know, it's out. If you haven't seen it before, it's, it'd probably be outdated today. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it was a beautiful baseball movie movie about baseball and, and there's a scene for those who don't haven't seen it the, the the main character is a career minor leaguer who's now in his like i don't know mid to late 30s and he's never he only made the majors once for like a week but he's, he's been in the minors his entire career and he's been called up to the minors again to help develop this young pitcher make it to the majors but he, he he's got basically no chance of ever making the majors this the main character is kevin costner so at one point he's on the bus and he's telling a story about one extra hit, one extra hit a week. Do you, do you remember that scene? Yeah. And he's and he's like one extra hit a week. Um, and he he breaks it all down with the numbers. If you got one little ground ball that finds a hole a week, just one a week, you would get twenty five more hits. That would equate to over the full season fifty points higher batting average. If you're a two fifty hitter, you're out of the league. If there, you're a three hundred hitter, you're in the Hall of Fame. That's the difference. Is one hit a week uh, between not even making the you know not even making the team and being a hall of famer over the course of your uh, career so that, that this uh this uh comment by the by reminded me of that and I, I i love that concept because it's so true if jack morris was exactly the same and did get 300 wins i wouldn't think twice he's a hall of famer hmm. and and it's and that i don't know if that's fair or not maybe it's, maybe it's just the wrong way to think of it what how, how about you well i think that in Jack Morris's case, and I for, let's preface this conversation a little bit too, because <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that the Hall of Fame conversation is a lot like politics. And somebody made this point on your post that the Hall of Fame conversation is like politics, but we should be able to have this conversation civilly. Like you and I will be civil to each other. We might disagree on things, but our commenters hopefully will uh, also be civil and not get mad at us if they disagree with our opinions. Uh, I am clearly not a Jack Morris fan. I don't think he should have been in the Hall of Fame. I, to be fair, I'm a Red Sox fan. I don't think Jim Rice is a Hall of Famer either. Uh, I don't think he should have gotten in. But um, I think that Jack Morris was already the beneficiary of so many extra wins because of the offenses that he his team played on. He was on the best offense in the league quite a few times top mm -hmm. five offense quite a few times i broke this down in my jack Morris yeah, yeah. video a while back uh that it's hard for me to see him getting a couple more but if he were to get more could i see him at 300 wins 3,000 strikeouts me saying yeah that's a that's a hall of famer i can because baseball is a big fan of those arbitrary numbers and i i typically buy into that as well I totally yeah. do. Like I totally do. Maybe it's in, maybe it's not correct, right? But there's no 300 win pitcher not in the Hall of Fame. There's and there wouldn't be. Roid guys, yeah. But oh, besides Roid guys, Clements, yeah. yeah. There's no right comments. There's no 500 home run guy not in except for Roid guys. No 3,000 hits. Like these are like once you get there, you're you're a lock Hall of Famer. Uh, that that's how we view it, right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. And I uh, I have worked in data analytics for a long, long time, performance analytics specifically. So, you know, I think about this stuff a lot, probably too much. Yeah. And in any other thing, I would say these are arbitrary numbers and we shouldn't be comparing them or, or using them as these yeah, random benchmarks, magic numbers. But I don't know, for some reason in baseball, it's different. There's something beautiful about it though. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It simplifies it a little bit. Yeah. And a lot of people complain that you and I use war for our arguments, but war... I think you would agree war is not an end all be all. I no, would never no, say this guy reached 70 war. So boom, he's a hall of famer No, or 60 war, whatever that number is. There are a lot of things. War is just kind of that first thing that I like to look at to tell me where to look next. Uh, same. And so uh, the way I describe war is if, if I was, if I had to judge a player on, and I was only allowed to look at one stat, I would look at war and make my best guess from that. 
but yeah, it's definitely not an end all be all. There's, it's just a, one piece of the puzzle, but yeah. You look at a guy who has a low, lowish, well, let's say Harold Baines, for instance. 39 <laughs> war, yeah. 39 war. If he had had a ton of postseason success or if he had been really, really popular throughout his career, he played for one team and he had uh, a bunch of the All Star game a lot of times, maybe then you could say, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy career, uh, underrated perhaps because of that postseason success. But that's, uh, I think that's the limit of war is those intangibles, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, like, like if he had had, had as much postseason success as say, like Jack Morris or something. <laughs> <laughs> well. Jack Morris had had one. Right, now, we're not going to get back into Jack. Yeah, all right, so. fine. <laughs> so wait, let me give you let me give you my um my example because I I love this yeah. example, um, because uh, it was a player I liked as a kid. So um, Steve Finley, you, you know Steve Finley. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you guess. What do you think Steve Finley's career war is? Um, I'm going to say it's fifteen. Oh no, no, it's much much higher. Steve Finley. Yeah. Thirty. Forty four. Really. Yeah, forty-four. Wow. So I, so he was he started his career with the Orioles, and I was a big Oriole fan. And uh, they traded him really young, and I was really disappointed when I was a kid. I just remember being a, a kid really liking him, and they traded. Him. I didn't know anything, but, uh, but so I, 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 you know, loosely followed his career, and he's way underrated in terms of like his rookie cards are common from nineteen eighty nine. Like pro probably most people couldn't even identify it. It's he's got th a few rookies in nineteen eighty nine. They're literally commons. You can go on. CUMC and buy them for 50 cents. Um, and like PSA 10s are like 15 bucks, right? I mean, they're, they're completely worthless. He's got no value in the hobby whatsoever. He's, his numbers are actually, I mean, 2,500 2, 500 hits, 300, 300 home runs and stolen bases, reached 300 in both. Not a lot of players did that. Career war 44. So he's not a Hall of Famer, and I would never argue that he is. He's clearly not. And in his first ballot on the Hall, on the hall of Fame, he got four votes out of like 600 less than 1% and he's out. So obviously nobody considers him a hall of famer or anywhere near it. Um, but if he had one extra hit a week, one hit a week, a ground ball that finds a hole, a little pop-up that finds a little empty spot in the outfield, or he's, he's 10% faster of a runner and he beats out an infield single once a, once a week. Once a week, he beats out an infield single. So he's 10% faster. Everything's nothing else is different. He's just a 10% faster runner. He would have over 3,000 hits, and his career batting average would be 324. And he would be an absolute no-brainer first ballot lock Hall of Famer. And that's all it takes. One hit a week over the course of your career to go from no chance to lock first ballot hall of famer I, I think that's just an amazing when you think about that so what you're saying then is baseball is 100 percent luck <laughs> i'm saying i don't know I'm, I'm saying the line the line is not as like the line's a lot grayer than we think of like how yeah. good these players are right based on their based on numbers yeah i remember carlos quintana was a red Sox player yeah in yeah early 90s i want to say uh -huh. And he had a high batting average, and I'm going completely off 30 plus year memory here. Okay, he had a high batting average at one point one season, and my dad said, "Yeah, but he's got all these little squibbers that find their way into the outfield. It's he's running on luck. This is not going to last." And I was like, "You know, I was tw oh, 12 years old or something." And I was like, "No, Carlos Quintana is great," <laughs> and sure enough, he completely collapsed. And my dad was completely right. But luck doesn't last. Yeah, right? you, yeah, you're going to have guys who bat. Uh, 300 for three weeks and they're actually 240 hitters right N right no exact perfect example what you just said like uh, take a take a, a a guy who's just entered the league and a hundred bats into their career they're like blowing it up and they're hitting like 340 jason dominguez well, well you take away eight hits and now he's he's 260 yeah that's all you know eight that's all it takes for him to not be blowing it up yeah. So you need a much, much bigger sample size before you can say he's awesome or not. Yeah. Steve Finley, that's a great example. He was yeah. on the 2001 Diamondbacks. He was, right? yeah. He did win a world. Oh, he, he won a uh, two-time All-Star. He did win five gold gloves and two-time two All-Stars. So. Wow. And a World Series ring. Yeah. 
I remembered him being good, but not that good for that long. 2,500 hits really surprises me. Well, and 300, 300. Like, how many players are 300, 300? It can't be many. Uh, yeah, can't be. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought I, thought, I just thought that that was, like, a, a good example. He might have been – he wasn't a Royds guy, was he? I don't think so. I don't think he was – I don't think he was ever busted, but he was. he's, like, a – one you would consider as, like, a – you know, if you looked at the numbers, maybe it suggests it, but – I don't think he was ever busted in any way. Yeah, he, yeah, that's true. He was, <laughs> he was in his twenties. He was hitting like five home runs a year, and then all of a sudden, at age thirty-one, he hit thirty, and then hit thirty throughout his uh, third throughout his 30s. just like Luis Gonzalez, same team. Yeah, right, similar. Yeah, so I mean, that's all uh, you know, speculation, but yeah, yeah. So let's do a little trivia. I'm going to give you a trivia right. question. Yeah. See how many of those. I don't even know the to- what's the topic? No, it's uh, junk wax era sets. Okay. Or brands. Okay. Sure, sure. So in in 1989, there were what five major brands? 1980, there was one major brand, yeah. Tops. Right. By 89, there were uh, five ish or so. In 1993, there were 15 pretty major brands of baseball cards. Okay. How many of those can you name? So the, by the, the major brands we're talking um, that were like listed in Beckett or you, what's the criteria for being a major brand? Uh, I don't know if they were all listed in Beckett because while I was a subscriber of Beckett in 1993, I don't remember that 30 okay. years ago, but certainly all of these are familiar to you. Okay. I, I, th- I would guess I can name them all. <laughs> okay. Let's 1993? see. 1993. Okay. I'm going to go semi-alphabetically here. Bowman. Uh, Donruss, yeah. Flair, yeah. Fleer, yeah. Uh, Leaf, yep. Yeah. This is perfectly in alphabetical order, by the way. I haven't missed one yet. No. Wow. Okay. Leaf. Um, I'm gonna miss one here. Uh, score. Yep. You did miss one. Stadium club. Yep. Studio. Yep. Tops. Ultra. Yep. Upper deck. Yep. SP. Yep. Oh, finest, of course. Uh, finest. Yep. Um, upper deck fun pack. Do you have that? I do. Upper deck fun pack. Was that 90? Okay. Triple play. Yep. Uh, Leaf triple play. Yep. OPG. I did not have OPG. Yeah, they, I mean, they're. I don't know if that they're Canadian brands. So I don't know if that counts. Um, am, am I missing something? You are missing two. Um, Can you give me the first letter? P. P. P oh, pinnacle. Yeah. Pinnacle. Yeah. And then this last one is now a Panini brand, although I don't know if they're related. It was a hobby box related a couple of years ago, but it became retail and Jeff Wilson had invested in a bunch of it. Oh, select, it select. Yeah. 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 And uh, so you got all, all 15 and then a couple of bonus. Oh, well, uh, OPG. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> OPG and finest. Oh, you didn't I, have finest? Well, you didn't have, well, uh, you had fun pack on there? I did. Well, so I put in some sub brands like. Okay. Upper Deck Fun Pack. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't have Finest. Oh. Uh, but can you name any sub brands of. Uh, f- there's one sub brand of Flair that I loved in 1993. Oh, like, like inserts? Um, yeah. Wave of the Future? That's right. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. If you have those listed, I can try those. Yep. And then well, I have two Fleer. Uh, Fleer in '93, they had Fleer All Star. Uh, they had what were those called? Um, there were a bunch in Fleer, I think. Well, there was the is All Stars not one? I don't have All Stars, I, I had All Stars under Leaf Gold All Star, Leaf Gold All Stars. Oh, Leaf Gold All Stars, yeah. No, I'm drawing, I a, write, I'm drawing a blank I didn't on write down. Yeah, I didn't write down everything. Fleer had Fleer Final. Fleer, oh, Fleer, oh, you mean oh, 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 Fleer Final. So you're saying like that, like a traded set? Because Fleer Final was a traded set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, Fleer, Fleer final. final and then Fleer Final Diamond Tributes. Uh, th th that was the insert in the final uh, final set. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have come up with that. Uh, and then... Yeah. You got pretty much everything. We got all the major brands. And then I had like Topps Black Gold. Topps Black Gold. Yeah, Topps Gold was there. Yeah. Um, Studio Heritage. Studio Heritage, good one. Yeah. Uh, the and then top... Stadium, Stadium Club. Stadium Club. Well, Stadium Club Murphy. That's right. Was, uh, was a set. Yeah. Yeah. Weird, weird set. I don't think Stadium Club had any, had any inserts yet. Oh, well, they had the fir first day production parallels. I don't remember those. Yeah. Hmm. Finest 30, 30 years. 30 years. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 very well done i'm impressed i given more time i probably could have come up with 13 or 14 of them but i wouldn't have come up with triple play for sure yeah triple play that was like a um, triple play and fun pack were like in the so in, in like 1990 every pack cost 50 cents right uh, yeah. and every brand maybe upper deck was like a dollar yeah and then and then and then the early 90s they like started to like up the price of packs like two dollars three dollars four dollars and then all of a sudden like kids were priced out so then they came out with upper deck fun pack and i think it's leaf triple play were like the cheap brands to try to get kids kids more options yeah but they didn't they didn't last very long because the hobby was was not going in that direction it was going in a more expensive stuff direction yeah well done oh, thank you that was a fun one yeah good <laughs> uh Let's move on to some more Hall of Fame talk because I'm going to share my screen. I'll preface this first of all by saying Joe Posnanski, I read his email newsletter. I think it's $7 a month. And he's, in my opinion, the best sports writer in America. I'm interviewing yeah. him in the next week or two about his new book that's coming out. Uh, I just tweeted at him yesterday and said, hey, come on my channel. Let's talk about baseball cards. And he said, okay. No uh, way. Huge Joe Posnanski fan. So he wrote in one of his uh, Joe blogs, uh, email newsletters last week about a Bill James article that Bill James had written that I can't find. So I'm, I'm citing Joe Posnanski's writing about Bill James. Bill James, the godfather of baseball analytics yeah. and, a, and a weird dude, uh, wrote about the 10 tiers. He says, the Hall of Fame is too, or baseball is too binary. You're either a Hall of Famer or you're completely forgotten. And he totally. suggests 10 tiers. And I'm going to bring up on my screen what uh, Joe Posnanski writes about it. So he says, uh, Bill recommends a 10-point system where every big leaguer starts at one and it goes up from there. And then one out of every three ones earns his way to two. One out of every three twos becomes a three and so on up until 10. So you've got 20,000 people have been big leaguers and then 6,666 have advanced to level two in theory and then so on and so forth. One third keep advancing until you get to level 10, which at this point in time only has one person. And then Joe Posnanski says he's doing this off the top of his head, so don't scream at him, but level 10 would just be Willie Mays. Level nine, nine would be Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron should have three people in here so well, i guess I willie mays no but it, it, willie mays is technically there too the way the way the math works out right uh yeah i guess so i is guess that, right? that makes sense well yeah because level eight only has six listed so it's like the six plus the three higher make uh, well yeah okay i assume that these the ellipsis here yeah you might be right so then he says Hall of Fame ends at around level five, but level five also has Keith Hernandez, Dwight Ave Evans, and Dick Allen. Level four has Hall of Famers in it. Jim Rice, Harold Baines, uh, Jim yeah. Cott. So, Jim Hunter. Yeah. And so it, it really simplifies Hall of Fame arguments. Let me unshare my screen here. What are your thoughts on this? I love it. Love it. I totally agree. It's a big problem. You have it's so black and white, Hall of Famer or not Hall of Famer. And that's like how, that's such a big part of your legacy. Um, I always thought that like Hall of Fame voting is like really silly. Like what I will so I love the I love the um 
I love the concept of the first ballot Hall of Famer. Like if I was a voter, I would not vote for many people in the first year, but I vote for everybody I wanted in in the second year. Uh, so I could keep a like, okay, there is a tier where you're a first ballot Hall of Famer, then you're Hall of Famer, and then you're, so at least there's three tiers. First ballot Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, non-Hall of Famer. Yep. Um, but I, I never understood like how someone would get voted in like the sixth year on the ballot. Like what changed between year two and year six? Like Scott Rowland, for example, why, why were... Why was he not a Hall of Famer five years ago, but now he is? That doesn't make any sense. And I think it, this solves a lot of that um, because, yeah, you, you you're not just it's not just black and white. I, I, I love I love the I love the concept. Yeah, I mean, the answer to your question is that people start campaigning for yeah. these guys, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, the politics, back, back uh, politics. <laughs> uh, right? And there's also the fact that the Hall of Fame ba ballots are sometimes too crowded. You could have Right. 12 guys that should be Hall of Famers. And for a long time, I think they've removed this, but for a long time, you could only have 10 guys on your ballot yeah. any given year. So, And plus, there's a lot, of, like you said, politics where some people will say, well, I don't want to vote for Cal Ripken on my first ballot because I don't think anybody should be unanimous. Right, right. Which is silly. Right. Um, but yeah, so this, I think, right now, baseball cards have values if you're a hall of famer and then there are values if you are you played your entire career with one team mm -hmm. and you were pretty good you're popular but then values drop significantly absolutely yeah no i mean it's it's it, right not just in not just in the baseball history but baseball card baseball card world uh jim cott gets a huge bump in value when he makes the hall of fame but you know dwight evans doesn't Right. Because he never right. did. Right. Is, yeah. is, what's the, you know, and it's, and it's actually, it's, it's actually a lot of it's because of the PSA, the PSA set registry, <laughs> they have the, you know, hall, rookie hall of fame collectors. And then you get, you know, now you have to get the Jim Cott to complete your collection. Right. So, but you don't need the Jim, M, the, the, the Dwight Evans. So nobody wants it. Right. I have the Dwight Evans right behind my head here. Yeah. It's, a nice, it's, under, it's, under, it's an under, underappreciated card. Al yeah. Bumbry's on, on there too. That's right. Alonzo Bumbry. Yeah. Both of them played for the Orioles. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think it would be interesting if every year there was some official, I don't know how you determine those tiers and Bill James, at least in Joe Posnanski's writing, doesn't define how the tiers are specifically defined. But imagine if every year Major League Baseball said these 60 players moved up. They moved, these players moved up from tier one to tier two. These ones moved up from tier two to tier three. And then there's a bump in their card values because of it. Oh, dude, that's so cool. And you, so you're, ta you're talking like active players. Active players. Yeah. So once you're retired, yeah. you don't move up or down. I don't think so because you're adding more players into the system. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got one third in each, one third move up, you wouldn't need to bump players out, I don't think. Why? No, no, I don't think I wouldn't think I, I would. I would. To me, it, it bothers me that you can go up or down after you've been retired. Like to me, that's silly. So I would want to avoid that. But yeah, I don't know. I would have to think the the math through on that. Because what if too many players enter and they're too high? Now it's not a third, a third, a third, a third anymore. Yeah, so, I don't know. There might need to be a system around that. But yeah, um, it's, but the, the concept be... is so good. Where, where did where did they say the the cutoff for Hall of Famers is five to six or four four to five? four to five after i guess before five so one through four yeah. wouldn't isn't current hall of fame and then five through ten is at least right. based on current hall of famers yeah uh, yeah and that's so that then now you have six tiers of the hall of fame which i love i love that idea because uh, because my hall of fame would be really small like i would i would but but i also completely get the argument that like it should be big like we want to celebrate all of baseball and we want to, you know, you want to, you want all teams represented and, you know, I get that concept as well. So that, that sort of solves both problems. Yeah. Like the hall, like I, I, the hall of very good, you know, everyone says that now it's the hall of very good. And I totally agree, but I also get that. Hey man, there's a lot of Jack Morris fans out there who truly loved him and loved watching him and they mean everything to him and he should be honored. He shouldn't just be like forgotten because he didn't make the hall of fame. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> so I'd always bring it back to Jaguars. <laughs> this is too fun. <laughs> I, I yeah. do like to some extent that the Hall of Fame is a feeling, right? Yeah. You say, yeah. if you said to me, is Pedro Martinez a Hall of Famer? Immediately, I, I feel, yes, he's a Hall yeah, of Famer. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 yeah. And if you ask a Twins fan, is Jack Morris a Hall of Famer? They think, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that there is something to be said for that. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love, I love the idea. Let's, let's. Uh, how do we, how do we get this going? Tell your guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something that I, I think I'm going to think more about because it. Uh, maybe I'll talk to Joe Posnanski about it when I interview him. So wait, he, he didn't write it. So Bill James, it was Bill James' idea, and he, he just wrote an article about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. but Joe is a, he writes thousands and thousands of words every day about baseball and concepts like this really intrigue him mm -hmm. uh yeah i i'm gonna give it some thought and maybe i'll come up with a some ideas and a, like a semi-proposal for him before i talk to him yeah because what, what so if you were to like start what would you even you would you would literally start by going through all twenty thousand players who have retired and put them make sure it's even rank them one to twenty thousand and so players you know one you know the, the bottom fourteen thousand would be tier one the next uh or whatever i mean that's almost what you would have to do right well yeah but could we come up with a point system like you get you make an all-star team and you get yes, 10 yeah. points you but get... it, a, a complicated one not just war like a, right yes yeah yeah, yeah. All -star, that, that, that explores MVP. a lot more a lot more aspects of your of your career right and rookie of the year voting you get some points and MVP, MVP voting any MVP votes right Boys. yeah uh if you for every game you play in the postseason Right, that you or, get uh, something like that, yeah. Some some grand uh, formula to, to to truly rank all the players. Yeah, but then yeah. Now, but, yeah, but then now you have to start factoring. Well, did this guy play twenty years, and this guy only played ten? Uh, but the ten-year guy was greater, and it's you know. There's the Kofax versus yeah Jack Morris. Argument. Yeah, right, right. No, but that that would be that would be so much fun. I would if I <laughs> I would I would uh, that would be like a dream job to have to to be. To have to design that yeah yeah i mean that's i'm gonna give that a lot of thought yeah yeah and i like I, I didn't think about active players like you're right you could you could be doing it while players are active and hey mookie Betts just had a you know an mvp caliber season he, he moves from from tier four up to tier five or wherever he is and he's on he's on his way up and um i guess in theory you could go down a tier two if you're active you have a really bad I, season yeah i guess so active yeah. players yeah i have a hard time saying oh dwight evans you're moving down no no yeah 30 I think years retired after you players, retired retired players should be done like like i said it, it bothers me to no end that someone would vote for would not vote for someone in their second year and then would on the sixth year i just don't understand what what could possibly what's what could the what could the logic be there i understand yeah. one to two because i understand the first ballot hall of famer thing but two two to six two to ten i mean what? Yeah. <laughs> what changed? Now, what, what I changed? used to go 15 years. Uh, yeah, right. And now it's just 10. Yeah, yeah. I think Bly Levin got in on his 15th year. Oh, that's right. They did used to do 15. That was that was a fairly recent change. Yeah. 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 And then and then the, the the committees are like completely random, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, they have veterans committees and they have executives committees. And I don't know how they choose who gets on those ballots, but you have to have eight out of 12 votes. Oh, I, th uh, I thought it was 16. I think there's, well, so the, was it 12? I think Maybe last, I think last year when McGriff got in, I thought it was 16 and he needed 12 out of 16. Maybe. And he got, I think he got all 16. And, and the, but then players like Don Matting, you know I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think this, that would be such a better system, the 10 tiered system, than the, the two tiered system we have now. Yes or no? So, would you then say if you're level six and above, you're a Hall of Famer? Or would you just have tiers and no actual Hall of Fame? Yeah, I would, I would love, I want, I think the, well, I think the Hall of Fame, it should be, you can literally, well, mostly you can put it into a computer and it says you're a hall of famer or not but it, it's ha it would have to be so complex it's not like war yeah um, and there would and there would need to be so the hardest part is like the the legacy of the, the, your legacy because um 
my, you know, my favorite way to ask the question is like, did, did you contribute to the story of baseball? Yeah. Um, and I think that is a big, for me, that's a big part if the answer is yes. Like, um, and I don't know how you would quantify that on with numbers, but, um, but if you could somehow quantify that with numbers, I would love it to just, there's a formula. It's super complex, but you plug it in. Yeah. He's tier six. He's in. And then you can take out the the bias where, where all these biases were. I mean, you know, really, why is that guy in and that guy's not? It doesn't make any sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right. Any last thoughts? Anything else you wanted to talk about before we wrap I wanna, up? I want I wanna I wanna design that formula. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it right now, live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that'll take a little while, but yeah, that's a that's a cool idea. Uh no, 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 no last thoughts. Me neither. I think, yeah, I've covered it all. All right, cool, man. Yeah, so everybody who's watching, thanks for watching. And throw some comments in if you have any thoughts or you, you think we're the worst. <laughs> we're stupid, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Chris. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. I'll be back again on your channel in two weeks. In two weeks. Very cool, man. See you then. All right. All right. See you, everybody. All right.